you know. Morning on a sack flight line. An ordinary day. B-58 bombers perched in an alert posture await the day's activity. An ordinary day. But what of the extraordinary day when the strength and swiftness of that striking arm is put to the ultimate test? The weapon system has passed through its share of extraordinary days. Days when its performance pushed over the historical markers of man's flight. Eighteen September, nineteen fifty-nine, Carswell Air Force Base, Texas. On this date. The B-58 proved its low-level assault capability and, in the process, racked up an unprecedented flight accomplishment. Flying at speeds on the edge of sound, the Hustler was never more than 500 feet above the terrain in its race across four states, from Texas to California. In strategic terms, what did the flight add up to? First, it verified prediction that high-speed, low-level strikes are feasible and without a sacrifice in B-58 high-altitude supersonic operation. In fact, just one week later, this same aircraft reaffirmed its high-altitude capability by racing from Seattle to Waco at an average speed of 20 miles a minute. Next, the on-the-deck flight to California meant that the enemy is vulnerable to one more mode of attack. By hugging the valleys and skimming mountaintops, the B-58 can sneak undetected beneath enemy radar nets and avoid missile installation making line-of-sight retaliation extremely difficult. Unique low-level, high-speed capability, penetration at small risk, pulverizing striking power, maximum chance of survival. These are the sum of what the B-58 accomplished in a few hours, 18 September, 1959. 22 November, 1960, Alamon Test Range, New Mexico. The mission? to make a fully automatic weapon release at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, from an altitude of 50,000 feet. The mission, climaxing a series of test drops, was successfully accomplished this day by a B-58 Hustler. The log separation was clean. The drop away of the free fall bomb followed the calculated track. To the crew, all was routine. But it was one of the missions which gave Colonel James K. Johnson, commander of the first B-58 wing, reason to say, we ought to get the best target because we have the best airplane. 13 and 14 September, 1960, Bergstrom Air Force Base, Texas. The 13th marked the opening of the 1960 SAC combat competition. On its debut, the B-58 Hustler won for its 43rd Bomb Wing crew the high and low-level bombing award. The first bomber to win such an award so soon after becoming a part of SAC's inventory. With only 40 days of preparation, a lone B-58 and two crews competed against 24 other crack crews flying 12 other bombers which had many thousands of operational hours under their wings. The quick reaction capability of SAC's new weapon system was vividly displayed by the B-58 crew. They approached the plane, boarded, started engines, and got wheels rolling in two minutes, ten seconds, half the time required for SAC's other operational bombers. And crews scored 200 out of a possible 200 points for this event. ready B-58 for both missions, its two crews scored 1,046 points, 137 points behind the first place winner. Accuracy on both radar bombing runs was much better than aircraft specification requirements. 
crew scored 198 out of a possible 200 points in aerial refueling on each occasion taking on 40,000 pounds in less than eight minutes. The importance of this refueling capability using existing tankers is clearly apparent. It means that the Hustler is intercontinental in range and strikes back targets the world over from bases within the United States. Indeed, the performance of the B-58 constituted an overall demonstration under combat conditions of SAC's present mission capability. Although not competing in the event, Royal Air Force teams were on hand as official observers, pointing out the fact that the B-58 is the free world's only operational supersonic bomber. Air Marshal Sir Kenneth Croft, Commander-in-Chief, summed up his observations in this way. I thought one of the most remarkable aspects of the competition was the success of the B-58. Whatever advantages they had in equipment, it surely must be unique for the first time in the competition to come out with the best common result. 12 January 1961, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Six new world speed records for payload and no payload flight were established by one SAC B-58 bomber in one flight, carrying a 4,000-pound payload. Five of these records were held by the Soviet Union. The record-breaking flight was under the supervision of the National Aeronautic Association, which forwards certification data to the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, Paris, France. NAA observers were at each turning point where official sighting stations were set up to make sure that the bomber, which reached the maximum ground speed of 1,425 miles per hour, did not cut inside the pylons on turns and thus shorten the required course distance. This run was to assault the 2,000-kilometer record, two laps around the track with a payload of 2,000 kilograms, about 4,000 pounds. The B-58 three-man crew were the following. Major Henry J. Dutchendorf, pilot, Captain William L. Polhaman, navigator bombardier, and Captain R. R. Wagoner, defense systems operator. All officers of the 65th Squadron of the 43rd, the Air Force's first B-58 bomb wing at Carswell Air Force Base, Fort Worth, Texas. Standing by to monitor the flight path were the crew's commanding general, Major General Nils Oman, commander of the 19th Air Division of the 2nd Air Force, and their commanding officer, Colonel James K. Johnson. Chase planes carrying NAA observers could keep up with the Mach 2 B-58 only for short stretches. Heavy reliance was placed on ground observers and tracking cameras for certification data. Even the tracking radar was pushed to the fullest to keep up. As it crossed the starting line, NAA officials timed it and watched it climb to altitude. Altitude is checked by onboard barograph, NAA officials in observation planes and tracking cameras. 1,061 miles an hour was the average speed, establishing three new world records for the 2,000-kilometer run, two laps around the 1,000-kilo course. The speed on the second lap, 1,200 miles per hour for 1,000 kilometers, established three more new world records. General Thomas S. Power at SAC's headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska said, the major significance of these B-58 record flights is that they have dramatically proved the capabilities of SAC's first operational supersonic bomber. 14 January 1961, Edwards Air Force Base, California. An Air Force B-58 Hustler today broke three of the six world speed records set only two days earlier by another B-58. Major Harold E. Conver was pilot, and his crew, officers of the 43rd Bomb Wing, were Major Richard H. Weir, navigator bombardier, Captain Harold S. Biallis, defense systems operator. Today's records, like those on January the 12th, were set with the aircraft in an uphill climb. Major Conver's plane crossed the starting line at 40,000 feet, and finished at 50,000. The flight required him to make a 185-degree turn over NAA monitored pylons, maintaining a 60-degree bank angle throughout the turn, and pulling more than two Gs, twice the force of gravity. From the ground, its turn looked razor sharp, cutting the pylon close and clean. The least cut inside the crosshair would have aborted the mission. 
Major Converse crew closed the 1,000-kilometer course with an average of 1,284 miles per hour, nearly 100 miles an hour faster than the B-58 record set two days early. Today is now. As scheduled, two B-58s left Edwards Air Force Base after their week of record-breaking high-speed runs to return home to Carswell Air Force Base. On the way, they flew simulated missions. Major Richard Weir, navigator bombardier of the Roadrunner, got a shot, a direct hit, on a practice bombing run. Captain Bill Polhamus of the Untouchable turned in a score that was well within aircraft specifications. Not an ordinary day, not an extraordinary day for these B-58s, but a special one, certainly, for their crew. A homecoming welcome. Today, the story at Carswell Air Force Base is that the first wing of the world's first supersonic bomber is operational, willing, able, ready. This was stated forcefully by General Keith K. Compton, SAC's Deputy Director of Operations, at the close of the 1960 combat competition. The superb bombing of the B-58 force in this competition definitely proves that the SAC now possesses a positive supersonic bombing competition capability. This competition has proven beyond a doubt that this weapon system is a potent alert vehicle with a positive 